Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be our Algebra 2 Exponential Functions Lesson 2 Rational Exponents Home Review, Homework Review Part 2. Starting with question number three, um, please make sure to watch the part one. If you had any questions for questions one, two, we're starting with question number three here. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and leave comments or questions below. Uh, especially in this case, if you have any questions about the work or in this case, a other math type of topics you want to cover. So we have question number three. <clears throat> we're given the function f of x equals five times parenthesis x plus four, close parenthesis three. So to three has power, which the following represents its y intercept. Well, we remember from previous lessons that the y intercept is going to be the y value when x is equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to set, you know, in this case, um, f of zero is x equal to zero. So f of zero is where we find the y intercept. So we have five parenthesis zero plus four to the 3 halves power. And so now we evaluate, and we'll find in this case that we get 5. 0 plus 4 is just 4 to 3 halves power. And so if we remember that the 3 halves power really is going to look like the square root of 4 to the 3rd, or in this case, the square root of 4 and then to the 3rd power. We can put the 3 in the uh, underneath the radical with the, with the uh, 4, or we can take the square root of 4 and then cube everything, which I think is much easier with our calculator. Because we know that the square root of 4 will be 2, and then 2 to the 3rd, because we know order operations says exponents for multiplication, it will be 5 times 8, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and 5 times 4 is 40. So our y-intercept is going to be choice 1, 40. Okay? Question number four, which of the following is equivalent to x to the negative one-half power? And uh, we might have this in class, so we take a look in this case and remember that whenever we have a negative exponent, it does not mean a number is negative. Instead, what it does mean, we take one over that same base, but to the positive exponent. So a negative exponent does not mean you have a negative number, but it means you take one over the base to the positive exponent, almost like as the number crosses the fraction bar and the sign of the exponent changes. And this, uh, in this case, the x to the one half power really is going to be the square, square root of x to the first, or really just one over square root of x. And that would be choice three. Question number five. Written without fractional or negative exponents. X to negative three over two. Okay, again, just like number four, negative exponent means we're gonna push this whole thing down across the fraction bar. So one over X to three halves. But this time around, we remember that the index is going to be the denominator of the exponent. So in this case, we have the square root because we're writing the radical form. So square root of x to the, and the numerator is going to be the power of the base here. So in this case, we have one over the square root of x cubed. Now we take a look here and go, okay, well, it looks like choice three. I was like, oh boy, wow, how come choice three? Well, you don't see the you don't see the index, it is going to be, in this case, an index of 2. So so in this case, you're like, oh, where's the 2? You don't see the index, it's going to be it'll be index of 2, okay? Question number 6. Which the following is not equivalent to 16 to 3 halves power? Okay, so... So we see 16 to 3 halves. So 16 to 3 halves can be expressed as the square root of 16 to the third power. So again, now I say, oh, it's choice four. Wait a minute, hold on, not equivalent. So we see here in radical form, 
it's not going to be it's going to be square root of 16 and third this actually works out so it can't be choice four because we're looking for is not equal to okay so let's continue with simplifying this so we can rewrite this now as the square root of 16 written raised to the third power okay so now we say okay well square 16 i know it's going to be uh in this case well uh, in this case it should be four so we have four to the third and four to the third is going to be four times four times four that's 16 times four that's 64. and so choice three matches up but that's not going to work out and so we already kind of see take a look in this case well you know you know either one or two and i'm looking at this and saying well four to the third eight to the third we know is not the same but that's square root of 4096 hmm okay well here's the thing let's investigate this whole 16 to the third well we know 16 times 16 should be 256 and then multiply by 16 again because 16 to the third is you know, 16 multiply itself three times. Let's see now. Well, 6 times 6 is 36. Carry that 3. Uh, 5 times 6 is 30. Drop the 3 here. Oh, sorry, 30. So 30 plus 3 is 33. So carry the 3. 2 times 6 is 12. Plus 3 is 15. And then 0 placeholder. 2, 5, 6. Add everything together. We have 6. We have 9. 0. Carry the 1. 4096 so this is also equivalent to the square root of 4096 so yeah this is actually equal to all the other ones so the one that we when we chose we figured out could not be it is choice two is not equivalent not equivalent okay all right so we're now question number seven. Marlene claims the square root of a, of a cube, the square root of a cube root is a sixth root. Is she correct? Hmm. To start, try rewriting the expression below in terms of fractional exponents. Then apply the product property of exponents. What they mean is the you know the, the product rule. <clears throat> well, let's rewrite in this case the cube root of a. Now the cube root of a. is going to be a the base the denominator of our fraction is going to for x points be three the index and it's a the first power so we get a to the one third so we really have the square root of a to the one third but if we remember in this case i'll put some parentheses here this is really index of two and so we can rewrite a to the one third power but square roots remember in this case <clears throat> it's a fractional exponent whose denominator is two and really the numerator here is one so we can rewrite this uh, nested radical situation as a instead of a radical within a radical really an x uh, the the radicand to an exponent raised to another exponent and when we raise a power to another power we're going to multiply the exponents. So we are going to get a times one third, a raised to one third, sorry, times one half. And when we multiply the exponents here, we get a to the one six. So great, we found in this case the, we found in this case the, uh, the, the uh, fractional equivalent, but now we rewrite this this is going to be again index of six of a to the first okay remember in this case ladies and gentlemen the denominator is the index of the radical and of course the numerator is going to be the exponent of the base right so we see here it is the sixth root of a so we would comment in this case make sure i use the right font here we go so marlene is correct marlene is correct the square root 
of the cube root. Oops, sorry, I can't spell very well. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. It's, uh, the square root of the cube root of a is the sixth root of a. Okay. So yes, and we see in this case by you by being able to change our radicals into exponents, we can find the answer. And now for question eight. We should know that the cube root of eight is two. And the reason we know that is because two times two times two is gonna equal to eight. So the cube root of eight is two. So to see how it's equivalent to eight to the one third equals two. We can solve the equation eight to the n equals two. To do this, we can rewrite the equation as two to the third raised the n equals two to the first. Well, how can we use equation to help us see that two eight to the one third equals two? Well, here's how this will work out. Okay, so we know that if we start off with two to the third raised the n is equal to two to the first power, that would mean that we raise a power to the power, we're going to multiply the exponents. So 2 to the 3n equals 2 to the first. Now, they're in equations. This is an equation here. Okay, so we have left side equals right side. And we see that the base of the left side is the same as the base on the right side. That will mean that the exponent on the left side must equal to the exponent on the right side. That being the case, we know that 3n equals 1. And if 3n equals 1, to solve for n, we divide both sides by 3. So n equals 1 third. Now, how does it help us out? Well, <clears throat> we have said before that 8 to the, we said in this case, um, to show how is the cube root of eight, well, in this case, we'll see that two to the third is equal to eight. And in this case, if we replace the two to the third with eight to the value we found in this case of one third is equal to two. Why, again, why does it work out? Because we have here, to the third was originally the same value as eight. It has the same value as eight here, right? And we solve for n. We solve in this case that our n value is equal to one third. So again, two to the third, so two to the third, solving this equation here, two to the third raised to the one third equals two to the first. That leads us to replacing two to the third with eight. And so now we get the we get the equation we want to show that eight to the one third or the cube root of eight. Why? Again, remember, ladies and gentlemen, that eight to the one third is equivalent to the cube root of eight. Ooh, I should use a solid here here. Cube root of eight is equal to two. Okay. So that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching. And these are hopefully helpful to you guys so, uh, as far as going over these uh, topics of exponential or rational exponents now. Uh, again, if you found this video helpful, please give a like and subscribe to the channel and leave comments or questions and just let me know how things are going and whether or not this is helpful to you guys. I appreciate, really would appreciate it if you did uh, leave a like though. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody, and be safe.